Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Massalam with Edwards Life Sciences, and I am honored to present the Heart Valve Visionary Award to Donette Smith, an outstanding heart valve disease patient advocate, president of the board of Heart Valve Voice US, and someone who we're, we're proud to call a longtime friend. The Heart Valve Visionary Award recognizes a leading heart valve disease patient advocate, and that is Donette for sure. This award honors Donette for her impactful volunteer work guiding national heart patient advocacy organizations in peer-to-peer -peer connection, education, and activism. You'll be interested to know that Donette actually had a 30-year career in civil service as a technical writer with the U.S. Army and Research Development and Engineering Command in Alabama. And earlier, she worked at NASA's Space Flight, Space Flight Center. So too often, people just see patients within the context of their condition. And I want you all to know that Donette's dedication and professionalism run deep and wide. So since her retirement, uh, Donette has generously devoted much of her time to the Mended Hearts, a nonprofit organization uh, that's focused on helping patients and their family through ongoing peer-to-peer -peer support and education and advocacy. She is the national immediate past president of the board of directors and the founder of the Mended Hearts chapter in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, she visits patients regularly, and she's a member of the Huntsville Hospital Auxiliary. And if that's not enough, uh, she also is the current chair of the board of the Heart Valve Voice U.S. This is a nonprofit that is a patient-led organization that focuses on improving the diagnosis, treatment, and management of heart valve patients by advocating for early detection, meaningful support, and timely access to appropriate treatment for all people affected. Donette has been a strong patient advocate on the local, state, and national level and the reason she does it all is to help educate others about heart disease. And it's become, she's really been part of that heart community her entire life. Donette, thank you for being an inspiration and powerful model to thousands of heart valve disease patients of how to engage in advocacy. It's wonderful to be with you today and to present you with the Heart Valve Visionary Award. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, this is quite an honor uh, and a surprise as well, but um, I just enjoy working with patients. I enjoy helping them go through this, this time in their lives when, when they think, you know, possibly this is the end. You know, it, it gives me pleasure to give them hope and uh, encourage them that they can go on and, and uh, build a life and, and uh, not, not look back. I mean, it's just really that simple. And it gives me place. I think that's what's kept me going all these years. But this beautiful, beautiful award, I am so proud. And it will be displayed prominently in my house. And I <laughs> promise you that. So thank you so much for this honor and this beautiful award. I appreciate it. Well, we're all proud to uh, to give it to you. Uh, if you don't mind, Donna, I'd love to ask you a few questions regarding your work that you're being recognized for. So if you're okay, uh, I've got a few. So uh, you, I understand that you were born with a bicuspid aortic valve, and you've had numerous surgeries and heart procedures. Would you mind telling us your story and uh, why you became a patient advocate? Absolutely. And in fact, my story goes from birth. So and I'm 73. So, you know, that's a, that's a long, long story, but I won't go that far. Um, I definitely was born with a bicuspid aortic valve. I had uh, aortic stenosis and was just short of breath all the time. But back in the day uh, when there wasn't as much research and knowledge about heart disease and birth defects, um, my parents were told I had asthma. And they treated me for years with asthma. You know, I couldn't keep up with my brothers. I lived in a pretty busy neighborhood with all boys. And, and uh, so I could outshoot and outride and outrun all of them. And uh, I mean, it was, it was hard, but, you know, I thought, okay, this is just the way I am. I'll just do it. 
And finally, um, when I was uh, going to work for NASA, um, they sent me in to get a physical and they then was the first I heard that I had a, um, had a heart murmur. So that scared me to death as an 18 year old. And uh, so they started doing all sorts of, of uh, tests on me there at, at, at NASA, which made me feel like a, like a space cadet or something with what they were doing, but they still couldn't, couldn't diagnose me uh, properly. And the years went by and uh, I finally, when the, the echocardiogram became available, uh, I was properly diagnosed and told that I had what I had and that it would eventually have to have surgery. Well, at age 40, uh, that time arrived and um, I went in for surgery. I had, um, I got a, uh, I got a human valve, homograph, I think is what they call it. Yeah. And um, so I came out of the surgery, um, was doing okay, had to go back in twice for uh, bleeding and clots and that kind of thing. So I had three surgeries in two days mm. and uh, finally got well from that. And I was told that my valve was still leaking. So I um, um, just went on with daily business, um, had two children and, uh, mm. you know, managed that well and uh, just was doing my thing. And all of a sudden um, on Easter Sunday in 1993, um, I felt like I'd been hit in the chest with a hammer and it was mm. so painful. I couldn't breathe. I had an aortic aneurysm. Mm. And uh, so they, they took me in to repair that. Um, I was in surgery for 10 and a half hours mm. and um, I got a, a, um, a mechanical valve, which I didn't want because I didn't want to have to take Coumadin. And you know how that goes. Everybody says that. And, yep. But, you know, when it's done, it's kind of hard to say, okay, let's back up and redo it. But um it was, it was quite a time and um, I got over that. And then um, this is not about heart, but shortly about four years after that surgery, I, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. And uh, with, when I, I went through radiation for about seven weeks and I kept asking them, is this going to damage my valve? Is this going to damage my valve? And it's been 11 years now. Um, I started having symptoms and my heart was uh, not working properly. The valve was going bad and, so I was sent because I'd had so many chest openings. They sent me to Vanderbilt and, and I was given a, a, um, an apical aortic shunt. And inside that shunt, it went from the left ventricle into the descending aorta. And uh, so it emptied from uh, uh, into the descending aorta and there's a pig valve in there. And I, everything was good to go, you know, went on and everything well. This year, with everything else going on, I started getting short of breath, and I, I would just push it aside. No, well, it turns out I I went to the hospital thinking I was having a heart attack, and and that's what they told me I had, and um, then went back in because I couldn't breathe, and um, finally made my way back to my regular cardiologist, which is what I should have done to start with. And uh, he he said, I know exactly what it is. That uh, that valve, that pig valve in the um, in the shunt, had just stopped working. So I was just literally starving for oxygen. I couldn't breathe. And uh, so I went into the hospital. Um, they kept me over at night. Well, a couple of nights actually. And finally uh, decided that I, I needed uh, a taver and uh, did the taver. And um, here I am. Good as new. Wow. And it's, it's been incredible. Well, you're a, you're a miracle. And, you know, most people would have gotten frustrated or angry or something, but instead you became an advocate. Um, what, what, what drove you to do that, Donette? Oh, I see so many people and I talk to so many people who are just discouraged and don't understand what's going on. And they might hear what their physician is saying, but they don't understand it and they're too afraid to ask. So, I mean, I saw that happening over and over and over again, and, and I just had to do something. And it just, it helps me to help somebody else. And I, I think that's what I'm going through all this stuff for. I mean, you name the, the heart disease, I've had it, you know, so I can talk about anything. And uh, it's so, I mean, I, re I ran into a lady at the restaurant last night and, and uh, she was telling me, she says, I have heart disease. I've had a stroke and she was going on and on, but she said, I just don't know what to do. So we wound up talking and she was the waitress. <laughs> so, you know, you just see, never know where see. you're going to find somebody. 
but you know it's so it's so good for you it just makes my heart feel good uh you know when you were telling this your life story or you're talking about running circles around the boys when you were growing up i'm not surprised by that you know a lot of people they just get intimidated when they get diagnosed with something as serious as a heart valve disease and and instead you you try and help them get through the intimidation and get empowered to do something and, and what is that is it just the personal touch or how does that work Jeanette? I think it's just so that you have the right and you can. It's okay for you to ask questions of your doctor. My mother never would. I mean, he was mm. sitting on a throne and you didn't dare question your doctor. <laughs> and she almost let him kill her until I came in and, and uh, says, oh, no, 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 no. You're having a heart attack. You're, you're going to get a stent. And uh, she did. And, and she lived quite a few more years after that. Good, yeah. uh, good years. So, yeah, it's, it's, I think a lot of times people just want to hear that it's okay, that, you know, I'm, I'm not crazy. This is actually happening to me. And although I don't understand what the doctor is telling me, they'll ask me questions that they won't ask the doctor. Of yeah. course, I, you know, I, then I steer them back to their physician. It's okay to talk to them. It's okay to ask questions. And, and that seems to, to empower them to, to, uh, answer their questions and get what they need. And um, I think everybody's looking for that. I mean, just just since, you know, I, I am. I mean, just since everything that's happened this year, there's a lot I don't know. And I'm, I'm having to ask questions and, and yeah. I have to tell myself, it's okay, you know. So that's, well, that's I, why I just, did it. Well, just listening to you, you know quite a lot. Matter of fact, I can't think of many people that have experienced everything that's happened uh, in the treatment of heart valve disease over all these years. And you've had a chance to see the advancement and the changes that have occurred, whether it's over 40 years or last even the last 10 years. So um, they've obviously changed. What, what advice do you have for new patients when they start considering options or maybe new options? Stand firm. So if you've done research and, and, do the right research, you know, just don't go to the internet and, and uh, just willy nilly pick something and believe that site's real. I've learned that. And uh, to, to go to a site that's reputable and that will give you the correct answers and, and be prepared when you go into the doctor. If you've decided you wanted a tabber and uh, they tell you, you can't have one, well then find out why not. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just that simple. And for them to know that they can do that, it's, I, they're just looking for somebody to tell them it's okay. It really yeah. is. They're afraid and, and they don't want to make the wrong choices. And so I try to, to get them to work with their physician. Probably you, like few others, you've personally experienced uh, so many of these procedures and personally experienced talking to patients and supporting them when they're going through their really trying times. And it has to be you know deeply personal for these patients in their journey and, and they don't know what to do. Um, so. Uh, for the people that are listening, uh, what what would you like to share about the value of the support that we get for, from others when we're going through those kind of tough times? Oh, my goodness. It's priceless. Absolutely priceless. I, I remember what got me so interested in helping other people and got me involved with Mended Hearts 30 years ago. Um, I was in that room just like these patients that I go visit or when COVID's not around, that we could go visit. But, um, you know, it's just being in that room, knowing that you're going in and I mean, they're messing with your heart, you know, I mean, you know, if they're going to cut off a hangnail, that's one thing or, you know, something like that, but they're, they're messing with your engine, you know, and, and that's, that's something serious. And it's really, it really takes you to your knees and uh, you have to relook at life and what you want out of it. And, where I am now and where I want to go. And, and I think it's so important to have somebody to be there for you. I do it all the time. Even through this, I get phone calls from people who just, they just want to talk. And even in the hospital bedside visits that we do, um, the patient just wants to talk. And, and I've had nurses call me in, they won't say anything. You know, they won't talk to us. Well, I go in and talk to them and, and, uh, you know, and they, they feel more comfortable. And I said, it's okay. Talk to your nurses and just having that support behind them. And just, and, and honestly, the, the kicker is you walk in their room or you talk to them on the phone and you're upbeat and you're happy and you're living your life to the fullest. And, you know, of 
I've had all these things and I'm still here and still going strong. I don't let anything stop me. And, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible to share that with somebody else. And they see that in you and they see that you're strong and that you got through all this and they can too. Donette, those are real words of wisdom. Thank you so much for the unselfish commitment of your time and the, just the extraordinary work that you do to help patients. And congratulations to you on this much deserved award. Thank you. I love it. I really do. Thank you so much.